Hello, this is Katie from It's a Witch's Life. I am doing a reading for client number 35. We're doing a, um, I forget the name of it right now. It's a, it's change reading, pathways to change, something like that. It's a five card reading and I did a little shuffle focusing on your situation, but I'm going to sort of um, do this a little more so you can see and I'm focusing on your concerns and your questions and your concern and question is regarding um, health and finances and if things are going to be better this year so we are going to Go through that. It's a little hard to do with one hand. I apologize. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm actually going to cut the cards. We are in a bit of a mess here. But we can actually organize them if I do it like that. The learning curve. There we go. Okay. So we're going to focus on your situation and your first question is about will things improve this year? So we're going to do five cards straight across. Hmm. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. But because I'm doing a Lenormand reading, um, I decided to do a Lenormand reading for you. I was really called to do it. Um, I have to follow my intuition here. And um, we have to do it this way. Okay, so let's move these down a little bit. Let's see here. This is, um, I can't even pronounce the name of the deck that I'm using. And I'm sorry, I don't have the box with me. But this is a variation. It's not even a variation. It's just a different artistic um, impression of, you know, the traditional Lenormand cards. This has all the same cards. But it's, uh... It's just, it's sort of collaged. I happen to really like it. Okay, so the first thing is the aspect that is complete. Okay, so this is your past. And um, I'm going to read it first straight across. And I'm going to go straight across. And then I'm going to add the house. And then I'm going to use these as houses and read it again. Okay? So you had some sort of... Um, social gathering, it could have been a party or um, a convention, I've gotten this card to represent like a convention or a conference of some kind, this is in your past but this could also just mean that your ability to go out and about and enjoy the things like the outdoor areas, that's past. Um, that's not something that you're able to do at this current moment. Uh, it's it's gone. And the things that are complete but are still lingering. Um, the tower can stand for several different things. Um, in this case, I think it's going to represent isolation. I think the isolation is is done but the effects of the isolation are still lingering and I think the isolation came from this inability to be able to um, or the ability to be in you know party mode um, and it sort of isolated you when you weren't able to get out and about and enjoy things that you probably really did enjoy at one point you know going out to parties and 
I don't want to say clubs and, and stuff like that, but, you know, this can stand for clubs, bars, uh, friends parties, like I said, those type of gatherings. And I think that um, this is part of your past. This is something that you really are not able to do at this current moment. And I think it, it caused you to feel really isolated and um, sort of, you know, like Rapunzel stuck in the tower up above, you know. But currently, it's not um, something that is really still tying you down, but the effects of being isolated are lingering within your system. I hope that makes sense. We'll go into a little more depth as we continue. The next card is um, where you're headed. Okay, so fish card to me is all about money and abundance. And before your ears perk up, we need to discuss that card. And I'm going to get to that shortly. So just follow along and we're going to make it a whole complete story in a minute. Um, the fish is all about money and abundance and prosperity and having enough and things like that. Um, and to me, this is a really good thing because this is really what you want. You know, this is about money and I really like to see that. Um, I really do. And I also need to mention here that the tower can also represent hospital stays and um, health institutions. So I need you to be thinking about how that might relate to you is in something that is past, but the effects are still lingering. Um, you know, this is something that might be put in isolation because you're sick. Okay. So the money here. The money is in your where you're going, but you have the expectation that burdens are going to be surrounding you. Um, this is a card of uh, a cross to bear, so it's not necessarily a positive card. More often than not, it's not good. I mean, look, I know we're not supposed to look into the imagery of the Lenormand, but really this um, artist did a really good job at actually sort of s sneaking in the meanings within the symbolism surrounding it. So, I mean, you have three, three swords piercing heart, three of swords, you know, if you want to go there. This is a card of um, heartache and and... Uh, your cross to bear. You feel like this is, you have a cross to bear. But really, where you're headed is towards some money, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, your lessons actually involve a gentleman of some kind. And this says a lot about your gentleman. So, you know, it's kind of hard for me to read the gentleman without jumping up to the card above it, because this is where the Lenormand really becomes a wonderful marriage, um, you know, by reading it in pairs. So let's continue and let's start from the beginning. But I just needed to get this because it really helps seed um, the next line. So let's read again straight across and then we're going to put them together. So the aspect is complete is confusion. Um, you've completed your confusion the aspect that is complete, but the effects are still lingering. Um, things are coming back to haunt you. Um, things are coming back to roost. I really like the um, Paris... I can't even pronounce his name at this point. I would have to look at it again. But Paris, a, a fortune teller in uh, Australia, calls it the coming back to roost car. Things that migration returning back. Uh, it's also new beginnings, but I believe in this case, something that happened in the past is coming back to uh, roost again. Okay, so in your, where you're headed, we have the fox. Now, 
If you traditionally look at a fox, a fox tends to be kind of a sneaky, sly agent. Um, the snake is also not something I would like to see, but that's not in your reading, thank goodness. But where you see the snake as being its snake, there's no doubt about it. The fox you will not see as being a, a fox. A fox is cunning. A fox wears masks. I don't know if you can see, but we have some like gestures going on here. There's the fox wearing a person's mask, holding it. You think it's a human, but really it's a fox underneath. So you have, um, you have to worry about and be conscious about people in your life currently that um, are not who they say they are. Um, there are people who are saying, oh, I'm this, I'm this, don't look at me like that, I'm definitely this, but really they truly are not. They are a sneaky, sneaky, sly, um, cunning person. And it's not necessarily a horrible thing, but I don't really like to see it with the money card, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, the next thing is, again, your expectations. And this is, um, the child is a card of innocence, but coupled with a cross, I'm going to say that it's sort of, um, it's sort of like, what is it, Pavlov's ex ex um, experiment where, you know, every time the dog sees something, it, it salivates. So I feel like it's sort of like a, um, a deep inbred sort of um, fear within you that things are not going to come out well. And the child to me tells me it's really not a well-developed thought and that um, truthfully you um, we need to look at things from a mature standpoint and see things from the standpoint of um, you know if Remove yourself from the situation and look at it objectively, I guess is the best way to say it. A lot of times kids don't look at things objectively. They look at things more in a um, an emotional sense. I want it. I want it now. You know, um, that was my my toy, you know, scream, kick, cry, etc. Um, and then your lesson is a lesson in being able to remain grounded and set in one spot regardless of what um, life has to throw at you, regardless of that. So let's take a look at the whole thing as a whole now that we've read the two different levels. Let's put it together. I'm sorry to, you know, bounce you around as of right now. This is how I do my readings because it's so easy um, using my cell phone. The clouds and garden tell me that in the past you had some serious doubts and confusion and possibly even depression when it came to, I would sort of use this as agoraphobia, uh, the fear of being in large places, the fear of going out in public. Um, if I were to put these two together, that's something that came into my mind. And to me, this represents that you had some serious anxiety and stress related to um, some sort of public, just maybe it's being out in public in general. It could be um, fear of what the public would think. It's, it's a very interesting card combination. Very interesting indeed. The next set is... Um, what has passed, but the effects are still lingering. So to me, this tells me that something, and remember I actually said this, something from childbirth possibly uh, is causing some conditions with your health. And to me, this is sort of reiterated here because um, I don't actually remember if I got the stork for your the reading, little mini free reading that I did for you the other day. Um, and I don't have my, my notes next to me. But the stork is 
as I said before, it's new beginnings, new births, but things also coming back to roost. Um, so what you put out is coming back. It's sort of like the boomerang type thing. You know, a bird goes to a certain place, and then as it's starting to get cooler, it goes back to the warm climate, then it goes back to the place, back and forth. Um, so this could actually just be your back and forth migration to the hospital or to um, some sort of doctor's office of some kind. And uh, if we were to look at it medically speaking, um, I actually don't have the medical terms memorized, but I have a, a little list of um, terms that I use when I'm talking about. Didn't this all written down, so I'm just going to page through that real fast and we'll look at what the stork means. But if I'm not mistaken, um, it's all about, yeah, okay. So the storks is actually about, it can mean several things. It can mean um, your body parts. Uh, it can mean like a childbirth, which I said maybe it was a complication during childbirth that you weren't even aware as being a complication, which is causing these medical problems and causing you to have to go to the hospital and get tests. But it could also just be an improvement in your health. So um, I'd be interested to know, and please keep me in the know, you know, what the doctors find out as you go back and forth between these hospital things. Um, and here's where I want to bring this fox in. Sometimes we need to be aware of how we might be tricked into getting things we don't necessarily need. And that might be these things coming to play here. Maybe you don't need every single one of those tests. Because um, I, I see um, there's some trickery going on surrounding the money. And... Um, and, and that's where you're headed. You're headed towards somebody not being completely honest. And let me see if I can go back to the fox real fast. The fox has to do with um, further investigation. So it's possible that um, you are on the mend and they might even know what the problem is, but they're just continuing to say, oh, we need more more tests and things of that nature, which I, I'm almost certain you said to me that they're not too sure and they keep telling you, you know, you have to get more tests and stuff like that. Be sure that um, you can be a strong advocate in your own corner to not being uh, bled dry for all of your abundance. Abundance is headed here, but you have to be careful of this, this sneaky sly fox, okay? And um, maybe we'll even throw a card on top of the fox and see if we can we can get a little more information about who that fox might be. Okay, so the next thing is your expectations. You sort of have this youthful expectation of deep burdens because it's something that's happened in the past. You know, if a child gets disappointed several, several, several times in a row, they sooner or later just stop expecting certain things. I mean, it becomes a learned behavior. You know, if every time, you know, a parent says, oh yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go, and it never happens, eventually when the child hears we're going to go, it's just, they say, oh yeah, whatever, it's not going to happen. You know, it becomes a learned thing. So just be sure that your expectations here are rooted in mature findings, and you don't jump to conclusions. You make educated, logical deductions of where you're headed and that way um, your expectation of these great burdens you know because you certainly in my opinion create um, things by your expectations so try to shift your expectations into a different way of looking at things um, and your lesson is is I think you need to look at a male figure a, I'm thinking it's probably your husband but I could be wrong, a strong, you know, an anchor is something that keeps you in place. And, and this is a man in your life, someone who's really been your anchor, you know what I mean? Someone who's really kept you 
um, secure during the storms that you've had to endure with each other. So I think you should really look and um, the lesson to be learned here is how strong of a man this person really is in your life. So let's just spread these cards out and randomly pull one card about who the... I, see, I don't like leaving the fox untold. I want to know who that fox is because I wouldn't want to not know who the fox is. So let's see here. Um... I'm going to pick this card right here. This is your fox. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, okay. The stars. The stars can mean several different things. The stars can mean hope, aspirations, Wishing upon a star, it can mean depletion because things, you know, it's spread out. Um, ha has somebody told you that it might be like a, a tumor or cancer or something like that? Because to me, um, the stars would represent in, in terms of health uh, something that's spreading. And, you know, something that spreads could be a, a cancerous or something like that. I don't think that's what you have. But, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm not a physician, and this is just cardomancy here going on, um, or a tumor, but I, or some sort of growth of some kind. Um, let's see. Let's see what my, my meanings for. Yeah, um. I, I think that this can mean several different things. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is um, someone who might be telling you that um, you need to have some sort of radiation or um, chemotherapy, maybe a laser treatment of some kind. These are just some key words. Um, and you'll most likely know who this, this is to be able to to say this. I'm going to stick with my first impression here that the the fox is sort of being foxy with your money, maybe telling you to get things that you don't need, and maybe a second opinion would be the way to go. Um, but the other thing I have to say is it's possible that you need to take control of not becoming depleted, and you need to become a little more foxy a little more sly and cunning with your money. That's another um, another way to look at this. I like to give multiple ways because some things will ring true to you and others will not. And truthfully, the Lenormand, it's very straightforward, but also at the same time, there's many different ways to put it all together. So I think that this means one of two things. Um, and you can decide which one best resonates with your soul. Somebody's being uh, sneaky and manipulative, causing you to be depleted in your money. Okay? Or they're spreading out your money on things that are not necessary. Okay? Think of it like that. Another way to look at it is that you need to um, take control and become more foxy, more sneaky, more sly. Get that second opinion on things that are going to deplete your finances. I mean, too many tests, you know, without getting a second opinion, um, you know, and when I mean a second opinion, maybe not someone even within the same healthcare network, maybe somebody outside of the healthcare network, because I truly believe doctors do communicate and, and stuff like that. Um, so to get somebody outside of the healthcare network who's a little detached from the situation, and not just out to get money. That might be the best plan here in terms of watching how that would be taken care of. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Now, your question is, will this be a better year health and financially? So, now that we've gone through all these cards, my short answer is, 
it has the potential to become a very good year for you. It has the potential to, um, to certainly, sorry, to certainly, um, become an amazing year for you because I think that you will see this sly fox or you need to become that sly fox which is going to help you bring in and not deplete yourself financially. Um, I think you're going to start looking to this man in your life as somebody who's really stable and capable of being there for you and appreciating them for what they do and I think that you will be able to work, um, you know, work your magic on, um, shifting your expectations from being that of, this is a burden to making more educated, um, educated and mature and logical steps in, you know, and so that knee jerk reaction that kids often do, it's, you know, okay, well, the doctor says I need a new test. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have cancer. It could mean that, um, you know, the first test just wasn't logical, you know, instead of that knee jerk reaction, oh my gosh, I can't do this again. This is going to be another horrible year because I still don't know what's right, wrong with me. Um, you can, you know, go along the process and it, and you can in turn get rid of the burden and make it not so much a burden. Um, even though, you know, it might be, it is your outlook that always controls how the situation really is. So yes, I do think that this year has the potential to become a great year for you because the isolation is over and isolation to me is one of the worst things because you can never really break out of your mood if you're isolated. You know, it's just sort of like you're stuck in that same repetitive, um, repetitive issue. So I think once you, you break free of that, it will be, um, you know, work on not allowing these things to come back and roost anymore and get yourself out of isolation. This is where you're headed. Be sure you, you take control of the depleting of the finances by either being a sneaky, cunning spender, shopper, secret, cunning um, advocate in your own quarter when it comes to your health and how the money's going out in that area. Um, definitely get control of the, uh, the expectations that it's going to be a horrible experience. And draw on this man, this anchor, this is your lesson, to draw on that person when you possibly can. Alright? So I hope this has been helpful to you. And um, this is your reading. And we're signing off now at about 28 minutes. And thank you again for uh, really sticking by my side and saying such amazing things to me. That really means quite a bit. And I hope this has answered your question. And I hope it has provided you with the peace of mind that you seek. And if you have any questions, I'm definitely more than capable of uh, answering them privately via message or via comment on um, YouTube. So thank you so much, client number 35. I truly appreciate your order and blessed be.